Welcome, adventurers. In today's Roblox Studio tutorial, we're diving into crafting dynamic dungeons. Grab your scripting tools and let's embark on this creative quest together. Keep in mind, the purpose of this video is to learn the basic of this system so that you can make your own version, perhaps better one. But if you just want to copy-paste the code and move on just like a chad, then you can always check the pin comment. My system consists of, let's just call them tile pieces. These are rooms and hallways. Rooms are where most of the important stuff happens, like player spawning, monster and loot generation, shops and NPCs, etc. On the other hand, hallways are there to connect the rooms together so they can be accessed by players. There are seven different variants of rooms based on entrance points. And there are five different hallways. All of those tiles should occupy the same amount of space. Like in my case, which is 8x8 according to the X and Z axes. You can customize them as you like. I made mine small for easier demonstration. Now build the walls and doors. Remember to place a primary part in the center. Now create the hallway, ensuring that the doors of the rooms and the doors of the hallways are identical so that there won't be any misalignment when placing them side by side. Again, don't forget to make the primary part. After completing the room and hallways, we'll need to position a part at the door. This part will aid in determining the direction for placing the next tile piece. I've made this part the same size as the door and named it Waypoints. The number of waypoint parts is one less than the number of doors. For instance, if a room has four doorways, I'll place three waypoints. The rationale behind this is that the door without a waypoint part will face the previous tile, where there's no need to place another tile piece. However, the starter room is an exception. Even though it has only one doorway, it still requires one waypoint. This is because the generation will commence from the starter room. And without a waypoint, the generation process will fail. I'll provide a more detailed explanation in the video. To ensure the waypoints face outward and not inward, select all the waypoint parts. Then right-click and toggle the Object Orientation Indicator on. This will display which way the part is facing. Rotate any parts that are facing the wrong way. Additionally, it's important to ensure that the primary part of every tile piece faces the door that doesn't have any waypoints. Otherwise, this might cause misplacement and errors in dungeon generation. Ah, the thrilling part comes next, scripting. But before diving into that, let's break it down into steps for an easier journey. First, the magic starts with generating the starting room. Then, utilizing the waypoints, it calculates the next square and strategically spawns a part to check its occupancy. If it's vacant, the system randomly picks a new tile piece from the asset folder stored in the replicated storage, which houses all the rooms and hallways. Here's the twist. I designed it to prevent two rooms' doors from being adjacent to ensure there's always a hallway in between. So, whenever a waypoint from a room triggers the random tile piece generation, it's programmed to choose hallways, ensuring a consistent flow in the dungeon layout. It repeats with every single waypoint, persisting until a certain number of rooms have been successfully generated. If the space is occupied, the waypoint cleverly transforms itself into a wall, acting as a dead end in the layout. I deliberately excluded the starting room from being chosen randomly to prevent such scenarios. Although you could code to avoid this situation, I prefer not to include them in my dungeon layout. To achieve this, I'll simply place it outside of the asset folder. Now I'll create a Boolean attribute named Room for all the tile pieces. 
This attribute will serve to differentiate between hallways and rooms. I'll set it to true for the room tile pieces and false for the hallway tile pieces. Now I'll add a script in the workspace. You can place it in server script service or wherever you prefer. First, I'll declare local variables for replicated storage and the asset folder. Then, I'll create a local function that takes starting position and the maximum number of rooms to generate as parameters. I'll declare another variable called current room generated to keep track of the number of rooms generated. Afterward, we'll clone the starter room from the replicated storage and position it inside a folder named Dungeon within the workspace. Then we'll convert the starting position into a C frame and update the starting room's primary part using a built-in function called SetPrimaryPartCFrame. Finally, we'll increment the room number by one. Next, we'll create another function within the main function. It will take a room or hallway as a parameter. It will iterate through all the children of the model to locate the waypoints. Upon finding one, it will calculate the next tile's position by moving 4.25 studs in the facing direction from the waypoint part's position. You might be wondering where did the 4.25 came from? To get this number, here's the trick. Place two rooms adjacent to each other with one room's waypoint facing the other room. Take the position of the waypoint and the position of the other room's primary part, then subtract them and use the magnitude. That calculation gives us the 4.25 value. Now, we're crafting a checkbox part to determine space occupancy. By utilizing workspace get parts in part, we obtain an array of overlapping parts with the checkbox. If this array holds any value, the waypoint part effortlessly transforms into a wall. However, in the absence of any value, we proceed to selecting a random tile piece from the asset folder. Upon this selection, we set the new tile piece's primary part to face the waypoint part. And you might have noticed I used set primary part C frame twice. The second time with C frame angles ensures the new tile piece maintains its alignment without any tilting antics. Now we check whether the new tile piece's room attribute is true. If it is, we'll increment current room generated by one. Then we'll call the branch out function with new tile piece as its parameter. To avoid interference, we'll nest this function within a coroutine.warp. Finally, it's showtime. We'll call the branch out and generate functions for a test run. Voila! It works like a charm. However, you might spot rooms with adjacent doors. Now, let's fix this little quick. Firstly, we'll enclose the for loop within an if statement. We'll check whether the model's room attribute is false. If false, it will run the normal for loop. However, if it's true, then we'll copy-paste the loop and modify it to generate hallways exclusively. To achieve this, we'll create an array containing all possible hallway types. Then we'll adjust the random tile piece selection to pick from this array instead of the asset folder. Additionally, I'll remove the waypoint parts that didn't transform into walls since they're no longer necessary. Let's give it another whirl. Voila! No rooms with adjacent doors this time around. We've completed our journey through this system and our exploration of the dungeon reaches its end. 
If you found this video enjoyable and learned anything from it, please consider liking and subscribing. For any lingering questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section. I'll do my best to provide answers. Peace out.